Keith Anderson uh, with the DC Department of General Services. Hey, Keith, how are you? Well, and yourself, hi, Denise. Uh, good, good. Uh, I like that. Build, sustain. I don't know what's in the middle, but build, uh, maintain and sustain our communities. Got it. Got maintain it. Maintain and sustain. That's it. That's what we do. Right. Right. And so how, how and what? Now you're, you're um, with environmental services there at the... No, I'm actually the director of the Department of General Services. Right. How in the world uh, did I get that wrong? Okay. We, we do have a pretty significant energy and environmental, uh, sustainable and sustainability and energy division that handles a lot of workforce. Yeah. Um, and, um, you know, this, uh, we, we really wanted to sort of key in on, uh, you know, environmental, uh, the environment and Earth Day uh, when, when we think about um, the environment. You know, we've had folks on from, we've had the Anacostia Riverkeeper, we're getting ready to have folks on from DC Woods, uh, you as well. But I think the real issue for us is that while there's a movement, uh, a, a an international movement to restore the earth, we don't see a lot of people like you and me, Keith, uh, in, in, in the stories that are told about what black folks are doing to uh, keep our environment safe. So talk to me one about, you know, why you're directing an agency that finds this as a priority. Absolutely, we find it as a priority because when you look at greenhouse gas emissions, the two biggest culprits are buildings and transportation. Um, just over the last year during this pandemic, we've seen the world essentially stop. Uh, and that had uh, exponential benefits on our environment. Uh, we've seen the effects of wildlife and greenhouse gas, the reduction of greenhouse gases uh, with uh, the pandemic, if there is a silver lining with this. Um, so with, at the Department of General Services, um, our job is to build, maintain, and sustain the District of Columbia's real estate portfolio. Denise, what that means is we manage 157 million square feet of land and almost 40 million square feet of buildings. That includes our education facilities like Anacostia Senior High School, Balu Senior High School, all the parks and recreation facilities, uh, as well as all the municipal buildings. And it is, uh, it is our mission to ensure that the buildings that we build and maintain on behalf of the residents of the District of Columbia are as sustainable as humanly possible. Um, we have two projects, one that I visited this morning. Uh, I'm proud to say that the Banneker, the new Banneker, senior high school will be a net zero facility. Uh, and that is a major step for an education facility of that size to be net zero. So and what uh, does and that, that is, mean? That means it produces more energy than it uses. So it doesn't, so uh, Pepco, in terms of uh, getting power from Pepco, that would be a secondary source. The building will be able to generate its own uh, energy to sustain itself. Uh, and, and, and this is the direction if we're going to really be serious about cutting greenhouse gas emissions and uh, things of that nature, these are, this is the direction that we're going in. Uh, the Department of General Services in partnership with our, with our uh, client agencies, especially the Department of Energy and Environment to ensure that our buildings are sustainable. And I know that there's a goal. I think the mayor has a goal, right, for the district um, to um, in Increase. Can you can you share with her her? Yeah, she has a very ambitious goal. Yes, to to cut greenhouse ga gas emissions by fifty percent by twenty thirty two, uh, and so in order to get there, uh, we have to be very intentional, uh, smart, and work with our partners uh, in order to make sure our buildings are energy efficient and that we rethink how we uh, uh, move about the city. Uh, but the, when when it comes to greenhouse ga gas emissions, these buildings are your number one culprit. Now, not too long ago, there was a ribbon cutting ceremony, maybe about two weeks ago. Uh, over just at last week. Run. Right. OK. Uh, at Oxen week. Run with the I mean, you know, I, I guess everybody knows today because I keep talking about Southeast that we work in and I live in Southeast. So I see a lot of what's going on in the community. And I watched all of those solar panels being built uh, over there at Oxen Run. And it's an amazing scene uh, visually. Uh, but can you talk about that and the impact that that's going to have in re on residents? Uh, so that was probably uh, one of the best projects that I've been a part of, Denise. Um, 
it is one of that project. It was one of those projects that before the, the solar panels were installed, uh, we already had had tremendous benefits benefits to the Ward 8 community. First of all, Oxen Run is the largest park in uh, the District of Columbia's portfolio. And before we can even begin uh, to inst install those solar, solar panels, can you believe we hauled over 200 tons of trash away from that site? So that was the first benefit for the community. The second was um, that we had local businesses working on that project. So there's an economic development side to that project. Now that the project is complete, um, I'm proud to say that it's uh, it, it, the, the solar panels cover five acres. Five acres. There's 7,488 panels out there that covers about five acres, uh, acres of land. And, because, and through this project, we're able to assist 780 households with their utility bills. They, and they will realize just about a 50% reduction in their utility bills uh, for years to come. Uh, and so this is one of those projects that just, it was a win-win for everyone from the onset. And I couldn't be more proud to uh, install those solar panels in the Ward 8 community uh, for Ward 8 residents. I, um, I, I know we have photographs from that event. I'm sorry we didn't bring those up because I'm sure people driving by, uh, I mean, we, we used to see that big old lot over there with just right. nothing. And so now uh, with the solar panels, we feel like we're you know, in, a, in a new century finally, we've caught up. And right. I'm, it's glad that res it's a good thing that residents have, um, you know, are gonna, local residents are gonna benefit from that. Um, and so are there any other, not only projects, but I guess one of the things as we have viewers listening, I mean, the two, there are two things. One, I wanna still go back to the fact of why we don't, why you think we don't see enough um, black people sort of portrayed in this whole, whole environmental issue and, and why it was even important for you uh, personally, mm -hmm. um, you know, where you grew up, was there something, you know, that motivated you to say, you know, this is important. This is going to be a priority to me and in, in my administration, besides what the mayor wants to do. <laughs> right. right. You, you know, uh, Denise, I would, I would push back a little bit. Um, I, I never forget. This is the last conversation I had with the late Marion Barry. Um, and I, and when I said to him, you know, people of color were sustainable before it was cool. Uh, think about growing up in that pot of grease that your, your grandmother reused on the side of the stove. Think about how we used to reuse things around the household and uh, even wear hand-me-downs. We were, we, we were reducing, uh, reusing, and recycling way before it was a thing. So I think people of color, because of circumstances, always had to be sustained, had to have some type of sustainability. Um, but as a native Washingtonian, uh, someone who is a product of D.C. public schools, I realized very early, that's right, I realized very early on the important uh, importance of maintaining or having a healthy environment uh, for generations to come. Um, we have to have clean air, we have to have uh, clean water, and our soil has to be clean in order to um, have a healthy environment. And so, you know, Anacostia, Anacostia was has, has been a, a, a sore uh, eye for DC for many years, but not anymore, um, because the Anacostia River is getting healthier and healthier. And uh, the work that we're doing in and around our buildings, um, I encourage uh, folks to read the Sustainable uh, DC Plan 2.0. You can find that at sustainable.dc.gov uh, to figure out uh, what sustainability really means and how you can, how you can, how you can help. Uh, but as far as people of color, um, I think, for one, um, we do have a connection to the environment. Um, and I would like to see um, us educate each other more about the importance of sustainability, about the importance of energy efficiency, about the importance of uh, energy efficiency in your home, not just on the electricity side, but water as well, because it does have a real impact on the quality of your life. You know, you said something there, and that is how you can help. And that's one of the messages that we want to get out. I know that it's been a great thing to see a lot of community gardens um, that people, you know, have, have installed uh, all over the city. Uh, and um, uh, there's still a lot of trash. You know, we got a lot of trash. Um, but yes, how, how individuals can help in this whole movement of sustainability. And so are you all involved in any 
other initiatives that um, the community should know about? Yeah, absolutely. So again, Oxen Run being the largest park in uh, DPR's inventory, um, we are building an outdoor fitness center. Um, because one thing we've learned through COVID, we need to get out and exercise. Where? Um, <laughs> uh, it's going to be in Oxen Run. I don't have the exact location, but it will be in Oxen Run Park, an outdoor fitness center uh, that has apparatuses that you can use your body weight uh, to get healthy. Um, we're also, I'm proud to say this, we're also install, installing a port, Portland Loo in the same uh, uh, location as the outdoor fitness center. Uh, the Portland Loo is a public restroom. Um, and so, Denise, you love Oxen Run Park. I love Oxen Run Park. Uh, but as a father, sometimes when you have children, uh, the last thing you want to have to do is make a mad dash to the restroom somewhere. So uh, to benefit the Ward 8 community, we're putting a, a Portland Loo in Oxen Run so that we can have a port, uh, public restroom in the park. Um, we're also looking at uh, upgrading the playground there as well. Um, we're going to demo the current playground and design a new one. Um, I had an opportunity to speak to the Friends of Oxen Run Park yesterday, and I understand what their their commitment and their needs are for that park. So uh, a lot of it's an exciting time for Oxen Run Park, uh, and I couldn't be happier to bring that to the Warden community. Yeah, this is going to be fantastic. It's it's a it's 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 another jewel in the community, and folks are beginning to is. to get out into it. It's got some beautiful um greenery some unique plants interesting wildlife i've seen wild turkeys and fox over there and, uh, and and that is the sign of a healthy environment and by removing 200 tons of trash by pulling those solar systems in by taking care of the park with the oxen run with the friends of oxen run we're really making a distant difference in ward eight and i couldn't be happier well i'm gonna end the oh go ahead no no i guess i was fun, going to just not. one fun fact for the listeners go ahead. all right um uh in terms of cherry trees the second oldest legacy cherry trees other than a tidal basin are located in knox and run park just wanted you to know that well that i knew i've been okay. trying to locate them though because when they talk about the cherry trees of course you know and they say don't come downtown i'm like well i'm gonna keep ours a secret so folks won't start come riding over here but i have i'm not quite sure where they are i'll so, be happy to show you Okay. All right. That'll be wonderful. We're going to, well, we lose, lost the blossoms already, but I'll know where to look next year. I appreciate there you that. Go. There you all, go. all right. Well, thank you so much um, for joining us and sharing this. Feel free to come anytime because we want folks to know, you know, the, what's going on that's benefiting their community. And it sounds like your office is, is right there doing the thing, right things to make our communities um, really healthy places to live. So we appreciate Absolutely. you. Thank all you. Okay. Have a good weekend. Thank you.